Good morning. Welcome to CAPES Virtual Classroom. In today's costing class, we'll be discussing the concept of investment appraisal. Investment appraisal is very important, be it for an individual or be it for company. As an individual or as a company, before investing our money in some project or in any investment scheme, you would like to understand whether this investment is worth investing or not. There are always certain criteria which generally people follow while investing. The first criteria is risk. How much risk an individual or a company can take? That entirely depends on their risk appetite. So risk is one of the factors which people generally uh, consider while investing in some scheme. The second criteria could be return. How much will be the return we will be getting out of this investment? The third is time frame. What is the time horizon we are looking at? Is this investment for short term or is it for long term? So primarily an individual or a company is looking for three criteria: risk, return and time. In today's topic, we will be discussing certain techniques which are called investment appraisal techniques. All your investments are going to be future related. So it is more important for us to understand whether we should put money today so that we can get better return in future or not. So the first method which we will be starting the investment appraisal topic with, it is called payback method. The payback method is a method which is the most frequently used by small investment. The payback method precisely tells us what will be the time frame when will you receive your money back. So let's say I have given 1 lakh rupees to you today. My next question is when are you returning my money back? The answer is payback period. Payback period is a period where company gets their investment back. Now let's see how do we calculate the payback period. The first method, the formula says initial investment divided by annual cash flow. For example, we have invested $100,000 today and we expect that every year the investment will generate $10,000. So our payback period in this example is going to be 10 years. In 10 years time, you can recover your money back and that says the payback period. In this example, we assume that our cash flow every year is going to be same. But practically, it may or may not be possible. Generally, you cannot expect exactly same cash flow every year. In that case, we cannot use this formula. Rather, we will be going for another method which will be used for uneven cash flow. The name of this method is called cumulative cash flow method. So this cumulative method is part of payback period only. It's just that in payback there are two type of methods which we follow. One for equal cash flow which we use here and another is for uneven cash flow which we shall be discussing now. What if if a company is expecting uneven cash flows in different years? How do we expect in those cases? Now let's talk about those methods. When a company is having uneven cash flow, how would a company calculate the payback period? Let's say, let's write year, let's write cash flow and then 
Let's write third column for cumulative cash flow. Let's assume in year 0, year 0 stands for present year. So in present year, company invested $100,000. That is why we are putting in brackets because it's a negative cash flow. Company is investing in this project. The cumulative cash flow for year 0 is going to be 100,000 negative. For year 1, let's assume a company is going to receive $50,000. How much will be the cumulative cash flow now? Exactly, it's going to be 50,000 negative. We have 100,000 negative before, then we got 50,000 plus cash flow and that's why cumulative cash flow is going to be negative 50,000. In year 0, we expect around 30,000 cash flow. So our cumulative cash flow will be now 20,000 negative. In year 3, we expect around 70,000. And that's where our cumulative cash flow will go as 50,000 positive. Now in this case, as we see that in money has been recovered between year 2 and 3 somewhere. In year 2, we had a negative cash flow, cumulative cash flow of 20,000. In year 3, we had positive cash flow of 50,000. That means there was a time between year 2 and 3 where your money got recovered. Now let's be precise and calculate what is the exact timeline where money got recovered. So in this case, company actually got 2 years for sure. Because till 2 years, the cash flow was negative. That means 2 years was minimum payback period. Then it's time for us to calculate the months. And let's see how we calculate the months. We take last negative figure, which was 20,000 in this case. Immediately after that, we had a positive figure of 70,000. So 70,000 will be put in here multiplied by 12 months. I repeat, 2 year because the company was having negative cash flow up to 2 years. Then we took last negative cumulative figure which was minus 20,000. Immediately after that we have a positive cash flow of 70,000 and that's been multiplied by 12. When you solve this, you will get exact period 2 years and these many months and that's exactly is your payback period. So in our first example, our payback period was this 10 year. Whenever company has equal cash flow, we follow this method. Whenever a company has uneven cash flow, we use this cumulative method. That's about payback method. As we can see, this is a very quick and simple method. But this method has a very big flaw. The method does not follow a concept of present value. Let's understand what is the present value. The present value is the value of money in today's time. As we understand, the value of money never remains same. With every year, with every passing day, the value of money is deteriorating. And this concept is about time value of money. We are sitting in year zero, that's present year. And we are expecting the cash flow for year one, two, three and so on. When I say that next year, my company is going to get $10,000. Will this $10,000 be worth $10,000? No, it will be much lesser than that. Reason being, there are a lot of factors in the market such as inflation and other factor which does impact the value of money. With every year, the value of money will go down and down. In payback method, we do not consider the time value of money. And that's the biggest flaw a payback method has. For simple calculations, we can suddenly use this method 
but for more complicated situations and for serious decisions for future time value needs to be considered so now let's try to understand the concept of time value of money now it's time for us to understand the concept of time value of money as we have discussed the value of money never remains same it changes and that's exactly what we call that time value of money i'm sure you may have heard the term called future value and present value so i'll tell you two methods how we can calculate the present value one is through formula and second is through a table which is given in your book otherwise this table is available online so you can just simply go google it and you will find something called present value table let's see how we calculate it through formula first the present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus r is to the power n in this example pv stands for present value the future value is fv r stands for rate of return and then n stands for time this is the formula of calculation of present value so for example a company wants to know that if a company wants 10000 dollars after 5 years and they are investing their money for 10% how much will be the present value of money so we want 10000 dollars after 5 years so 10000 is our future value 1 plus r is 0.10 here and the n in this example is 5 years when you solve this question you will get the present value of money if you want 10000 dollar after 5 years at the rate of 10% how much is the present value of the same we also now in this example we calculated the present value in this case if present value is given and all other factors are given except future value can we calculate that it's a missing figure question suppose 10000 is the present value we do not know the future value the r is 10% and n is 5 you have to simply multiply these two and you will get the future value so this is the first method to calculate the time value or the present value that is through the formula the another method could be simply you can go online and find a table called present value table let me tell you how to see that table once you get the present value table in hand you will see on top there will be different r's 2% 5% 10% 15% and so on when you look at your left side you will find the number of years year 0 1 2 3 4 and so on So if I say calculate the present value factor for two percent for two years, you have to see two percent from the top and two years from the left side. This is how we see present value table. Now, when we understand the concept of time value of money, let's solve a question and understand one more method of investment appraisal, which is called present value method. Now, let's understand the method called present value method. in short we can also call that pv method the present value method is a method which takes care of the present value factor which can also be called discount factor present value factor or time value factor all three are same all right let's take a question let's put eo cash flow pv factors and present value in year 0 a company has invested 
$50,000. Please remember the present value factor for year 0 is always 1. The reason being the time value of money does not change in the present year. And present year is year 0. So here the present value factor will be 10, 1. So the present value it is going to be 50,000 negative. The present value is calculated by cash flow multiplied by PV factor. So in this case 50,000 was invested in year 0. PV factor is 1. If you multiply these two you will get this column called PV, present value. Let's see, in year 1, a company expect $10,000 revenue or cash flow to be precise. I am assuming the R is 10% in this case. If you go to present value table or you use the formula and try to calculate the present value factor for 10% for one year, it's going to be 0 0.909. You can check in table or you can calculate through formula. So the present value factor is 0 0.909 here. If I multiply this two, it will become 9090. For year two, let's say company has 10,000 again. The present value factor Let's say it's going to be 0.826 now. If you multiply this two, it will become 8260. We can keep doing it whatever is the useful life of project. So in this case, I'm just assuming a project has just two years of life. We have calculated for two years. Under present value method, we only calculate the present values which we calculated in the last column. There is another method which is linked to it. It is called net present value method. Under NPV, we take the present values and out of this, we subtract the initial investment. In this case, these two are positive figures. So let's add up both and then subtract the initial investment which is a negative figure. When you do that, you will get NPV. So in this case, our positive figure is 17,350. Our initial investment is 50,000. So how much is the NPV? So now our NPV is 42,650 but this is negative. Our present value is lesser than our initial investment. Now when we have understood this calculation of present value and net present value, let's understand what is the decision criteria, how do we select investments. Let's go back to our initial method which was payback method. The payback method tells us what should be the duration of investment, when will you get your money back. So the investment criteria or decision criteria for payback method is the shorter the payback that should be your preferred choice. Our investment of option which gives you shortest payback method or shortest payback period should be selected. When it comes to present value method or net present value method, we should select all those projects which gives us positive NPV. 
you will only get positive npv your when your initial investment is lesser than your cash flows the present value of cash flow in this case as our initial investment was much but the present value is lesser this is not worth investment so the criteria is whenever there is a positive npv select it whenever there is negative npv reject it if company has two options and both projects give you positive npv which one should we select guess it right that should be the npv which is higher so when two mutually exclusive projects are given and both are having positive npv we select a project with the higher npv so short recap shortest payback highest pv and highest npv if it's negative then we should reject it if npv is positive we should select it so that's about three investment techniques which we understood payback method present value method and net present value method now it's time for us to go back to fourth technique which is called irr so guys as we have understood the three methods of investment appraisal it's time for us to learn the fourth method the fourth method of investment appraisal is called irr irr stands for internal rate of return so far we did consider the time value of money we looked at the payback period also now the question arises how much return a company's project will generate internally what if if a company has borrowed money from market and then invested in the project so ideally the return should be higher than cost of capital whenever a company borrows from the market there is a cost of capital involved even if company has not borrowed it there is an opportunity cost involved so that cost of capital needs to be considered irr basically looked upon an aspect how much return a company's project can generate internally and then we compare irr to the cost of capital if our irr is higher than cost of capital we select the project if our irr is lesser than cost of capital we should not select the project what if there will be two mutually exclusive project with both higher irr in that case we should select the highest irr project let's see what is the formula of irr the formula is little complicated the formula says l plus npv l divided by npv h minus npv l and then h minus l you can also use multiplied here so that's the formula to calculate irr now let me explain what does it mean low stands for sorry l stands for the lower rate of return so far we were fixed so far we decided a fixed r but practically the r may not be that fixed so let's assume two rs from the market one is lower one is higher for example 5% 8% 10% 12% any two r you can select just keep in mind the difference between r should not be too much for example 10% and 50% don't do that your irr will not be very clear in that case if my company has taken two rs say 8 and 10 then l is going to be 8 and h is going to be 10 so when you see l we are talking about lower rate of return when we say h we are talking about higher rate of return the npv l stands for net present value at lower rate of return just now we understood how to calculate npv now when we understood this method so we calculated npv at 8 and 10 respectively the one with 8 will come here 
NPV at low and then NPV at edge will be the 10% NPV. So once you get all those figures, you put that in formula, it will give you the answer in percentage. How much is the IRR for the business? And once you get that IRR, the decision criteria is going to be if IRR is greater than cost of capital, we select it. If IRR is lesser than cost of capital, we reject it. A company would not like to put their money into a project which is not even get, get, giving the return which they are spending on capital. So ideally it should always be higher than cost of capital. If there are two projects, in those cases we will select the one with higher IRR. That is about the method called invest, internal rate of return, in short we call IRR. So under investment appraisal techniques, we understood four techniques, payback, present value, net present value and internal rate of return. If you have noticed one thing in these, in all our formulas, whatever method we discussed, we always used cash flow. We never used profits. What exactly is the difference between cash flow and profit? All kind of non-cash adjustments which are there in profit may not be in cash flow. An investor is more interested in knowing about the cash flow, not only the profits. That is why we have taken cash flow in all our methods, not the profit. In examination, if question has given you profit, then please change the profit to cash flow. How do we do it? If the depreciation figure is given, please add back depreciation into profit. Once you add back depreciation into profit, it will become cash flow. All kind of non-cash expenditures such as depreciation, amortization needs to be adjusted in the profit in order to get cash flow. Please remember whatever methods we have discussed so far, none of them will be using the profits. All methods will be using cash flow as a base. So please convert the profit into cash flow if it is not given in the question. Once you are done with it, all you have to do is just simply put the formulas and apply it. So that's all about the concept of investment appraisal. In our next class, we shall come back with the new topic. Till then, stay tuned. See you soon.